welcome to part 8 of this video series. Today we're going to be discussing onboard storage, how to create more, and how to organize it. I highly doubt there are any small boat level boards who think they have too much storage. However, there might be a debate on how much living space should be dedicated to storage. I once heard a saying that you should take what you need to live and add 20% and that's how much storage you need. Personally, I think 20% is a bit high. To me, it's all about organization. As long as it's organized, that's all that matters. As I mentioned in a previous video, a lot of small boat manufacturers will attempt to tell you that just having large bins will give you a lot more storage space. And yes, technically they are right. But as I'm sure most people are aware, what's the point of more storage if you can't find anything? There are tons of storage hacks out there, some of which we will look at today. But the one thing I will say is, even if you're not organized at home, you absolutely have to be on a boat. I'm sure you've heard the old adage, a place for everything and everything in its place. It's so true that even when you're shopping and you see something you want, the very first thing you should be thinking of is where I can store this properly on my boat. There are some items that you absolutely need to have, but finding a good place to store them can be a challenge. One example of this is shoes. With shoes, the first thing you're going to have to figure out is how many you actually need. Like everything else on board, less is more. However, I know some women who will argue with me about what is an acceptable amount of shoes. I had a friend who was moving across the country, so she packed all her stuff into an SUV and was driving across. My friends felt so bad she was leaving so much behind, so they got her a large rooftop carrier. Later we found out she had filled the entire thing with shoes. This simply will not work on a boat. Shoes can create another problem, and that's, well, sometimes depending on the type of shoes and the person wearing them, they could smell bad. And if you can imagine storing these close to where you eat and sleep, this can be very unpleasant. If you have a spot outside and you can store them out of the elements, this is best. But you can also seal them in a sealed plastic box or a large Ziploc storage bag. Things like hiking boots have another issue, and that's dirt. Obviously, you need a special place for them. As far as other shoes that do not have these problems, one solution is these over-the-door hanging shoe organizers. You can hang it on the back of your head door if you have one, or directly on a wall. You can fit a lot of shoes in these. Some shoes, like water shoes or sandals, can fit both in one pocket. These pockets can also be used to store all sorts of other stuff. If you do buy one of these, don't buy one from your local dollar store. They fall apart in no time. Try to find the best quality one you can find. Plastic is better than fabric. It doesn't contribute to mold and mildew problems, although fabric can look better. Okay, enough about shoes. Next, we should look at outside storage. Bins in the cockpit are called lazarettes. These are typically used to store lines, fenders, anchor gear, etc. However, if you can store these things elsewhere on the deck, it frees these up for storage of other stuff. So let's look at a couple of items you can remove from the lazarette. First is the most bulky thing, and that's fenders. Some people just let them hang off the side of the boat full time, but this is a bad idea. First of all, it's very unsightly. Sitting partly in the water, they get covered in algae, or they continuously rub on your hull, wearing away your gel coat, or they can create marks along the side of the hull. They're also at risk of becoming loose and floating away. One place you could store them is in fender racks, if you have the deck space to put them there. Another idea is to tie them horizontally along a tow rail. I had met a sailor who had created a simple pulley system that when he pulled the line on each side, it pulled the fenders up horizontally and out of the way. Today there's also flat fenders. I haven't tried these myself, but the reviews look really great. As for boat hook storage, these can be stored along lifelines horizontally or if you're on a sailboat vertically along a shroud. Telescoping boats are obviously a much easier to stow than rigid ones. Boat lines can be hung from just about anywhere, from off of lifelines, on the back of bulkheads, to the back of cabinet doors. Things like winch handles, etc. can be stored in combing boxes or other storage boxes that can be installed in the space between the walls of the cockpit. These come in a variety of shapes and sizes and can be mounted aftermarket. Even though some lazarettes can be sealed, they still have a tendency to get a lot of moisture inside. If you're going to store anything in there that's moisture sensitive, then make sure you store them in a waterproof container. Okay, next we will move inside the head. If your boat has an enclosed head, these can be a great place to store stuff when the head is not in use. One simple way is just to use a couple large Rubbermaid style containers and move them out of the way when you need to actually use the head. Usually if you do have an enclosed head on a small boat, there's almost no storage. Quite often, not even enough for toilet paper. Sometimes you can put a storage box through a bulkhead, depending on what's on the other side. Another great idea is, 
If you can find a way to make a clothes rod that is removable, they work great in the head. In the main salon, you'll find that most manufacturers just have open space or bins under the settees and V-berth. This is extremely inefficient. Yes, you can store more this way, but finding anything in these can be a real challenge. The easiest thing to do is just to use plastic containers and organize them that way. Making the front removable will also help with accessing your stuff without having to remove all the cushions. Also, if you can add ventilation like caning or louvers, it will help stop condensation from building up inside and creating mold and mildew. But, if you can change these into drawers, that is always the best, but it can be a real challenge with the curves inside. As for galley storage, this takes the most imagination. There's lots of options here, so I'll just throw out a couple. For example, cooking knives. You can keep them in a drawer, but then they're always moving around, rattling, etc. Mounting a skinny knife block on a bulkhead works, or you can keep them on a magnetic wall holder. Now, historically, you would never put a big magnet on a boat because it throws off the compass, including cell phone compasses. However, I don't know any boaters in this day and age who use a compass anymore. We all have at least a GPS on our cell phones, and they're not affected at all by magnets. There's a lot of things that you can buy that attach via suction cups to the wall, uh, from nets, hooks, to small bins, to tablet holders. However, trying to find a place to stick these can be a real challenge, and you might be resticking them over and over and over. I've been told if you want to make them more permanent, you can coat the suction cup with epoxy. But personally, I just remove the suction cup and use screws. I started to create a whole database of hacks and mods like these, so in the future I can create a whole video series dedicated to just boat hacks. And thank you again for watching. Please remember to subscribe so you won't miss any future videos.